Hello. So uh, I am Brian, uh, as my picture probably says. Uh, I am an engineer at Microsoft. I've been here since like 2018. Before that, I was actually at Docker working with Solomon and what have you. Um, and uh, our team is kind of responsible for building all the assets related to cloud native projects from Kubernetes and all those services we build on top of Kubernetes all the way down to the container runtime stack, um, basically stopping at run C and uh, uh, anything below that. Um, now, Peter, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Peter. Um, Brian said most of it, so <laughs> that should suffice. And I tried to say it while being slick and looking for the share button, and I like it's been so long since I used had to share on uh, Zoom before. I actually I don't see the share button. Oh, there it is, the big green button. Wow. I am going to hope that people can see my presentation. Uh, it says putting a dagger through our build pipelines. Uh, you can there's a link at the uh, bottom of that if you wanted to check out what we're working on. Um, and I can't see chat or anything. So if you're if somebody wants to tell me if there's looks a good or something like that. So so uh, kicking this off, just kind of give some background of where we're coming from. Uh, when I first started at Docker, we were or sorry, not Docker, at Microsoft. <laughs> we were just uh, beginning to start building our own builds of Docker and the container runtime stack uh, because of a couple of different reasons. Um, mainly, we saw basically almost every team in Microsoft was using Docker. Um, and also at the same time, we were looking at our supply chains and um, wanting to uh, secure those. So having our own builds of Docker uh, kind of helped with that. We can do, you know, we sign our builds and um, run it on our own hardware and that that's uh, locked down and all that kind of stuff. Not to say that there's anything wrong with Docker's builds, but uh, just because of the position we're in, that's what uh, we need to do. And we're also looking at uh, licensing at the time and and the EULA, uh, we just wanted to, to do right by by those uh, by the licenses, uh, so we started building our own uh, and bootstrapping that. Uh, so when I first started, the our IoT team was uh, actually working on getting their own builds of Docker uh, under um, so they could run it on IoT devices like um, Pies and stuff. Uh, so it was kind of focused on getting ARMv7 uh, support. And in addition, they were doing AMB64. And because of that, they were building everything inside of QMU. Only Azure didn't have nested vert at the time. Um, so everything was running under emulation in QMU. Uh, thankfully, we're statically compiling everything. So we only had to build it one time um, for every platform, uh, or for each platform, AMB64 and RMV7. Uh, we did have to build devs and RPMs. And I think they were not sharing binaries in those between those two. So we built um, AMB64 and ARM v7 binaries for Deb and then again for RPM and stuff, um, just because this was in a VM and everything is more difficult that way. And everything was in these omnibus packages. So it was one package that included Docker and Run C, Container D, the Docker CLI. Uh, I believe that's it for everything at the time. And our builds took a whopping four and a half, four plus hours. Uh, which is a bit unacceptable, uh, especially for a Go project, which you're expecting minutes uh, at, at worst. So um, when I joined the team, I basically took everything. I know a thing or two about Docker and uh, redid all the builds so that we were building in Docker with cross compilation. Um, I, I think I contributed some stuff upstream to make cross compilation work with static uh, or with the linked C libraries. So we didn't have to do Seago disabled, um, at least. Uh, but there's stuff in, when you're building static builds with uh, Docker, there's certain things that won't work uh, or like you won't get updates of like set comp and that kind of stuff, um, important security features. Uh, so it's still not 
ideal uh, omnibus packages still. So if we if container D didn't update, we had to rebuild the whole stack. If run C didn't update, we had to build the whole stack. Um, not exactly ideal either, although there are some benefits to that because it's one hermetic unit. Uh, we don't have to deal with incompatibilities and all that. Uh, so we started looking towards making dynamically linked libraries uh, so that everything works as expected. They more match the uh, Docker CE builds in, in that regard. Uh, we ended up cross-compiling most things uh, for because we only had uh, AMD64 build agents at the time. Uh, so uh, anything that we're running under QMU was uh, very slow. Uh, so unfortunately, some build chains don't work that well for cross compilation. Uh, but particularly like when you're looking at like Debian, I, I missed it on the slide here. So when we're building dynamically link, link libraries, we have to build for every single distribution. Uh, and, and, uh, because you're targeting the distributions, uh, libraries. Um, so that means every distribution that we support needs its own build. Um, and things like RHEL's cross-compilation support isn't the best. So that ended up going in QMU with Binfumpt, which is great, but still it's QMU uh, emulated um, for ARMv7 and ARM64. Uh, and things were starting to get to be a bit of a mess. They definitely worked and worked very well, but it was starting to get very hard to maintain because we had uh, every Docker, every distro need its own Docker file. Uh, every distro had its own quirks that we had to work around. Uh, some were cross-compiled, some were not. In practice, I think I made it. So everything um, could be done in QMU or cross-compiled, except for the cases that couldn't be cross-compiled. But you can choose, basically, uh, if, if the choice was available. Uh, our list of, our, of targets um, for distributions was, is always moving. So, um, you know. New distros come out, old distros go away, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, logic between Docker files are very hard to share uh, and also extremely difficult to test uh, units. Uh, so Dagger came out um, originally with the Q API or with the CLI that just did Q. And I thought Q was, was quite amazing, actually. I, I loved Q. Um, it was very much like a programming language. I started putting... Uh, a bunch of things together to try and uh, to make our packaging work uh, with Q, and it did very well until I started to realize this is not a programming language, even though it feels like a programming language. And we started hitting roadblocks, um, mainly that what we were limited by what Dagger itself could do, uh, which is a lot, but still limited to what Dagger could do, uh, and adding the new functionality um, that uh and basically adding function that required adding features to dagger uh to the dagger cli uh which kind of made it ended up being a no go um for our needs for for this particular case um we ended up scratching that and uh in order to just kind of get by we moved a bunch of our stuff to use uh, Docker's bake feature, which has HCL, and HCL is kind of another one of these Turing completish languages, uh, con configuration languages, um, and it th definitely helped with some sprawl and being able to share some things. Uh, but it was still kind of a mess, and basically, I was the only one that knew how it worked, and it's difficult to just look at something to see uh, what was happening. Um, so. Solomon pinged me to say, oh, we've got this new project called Cloak, uh, which today is the Dagger S uh, SDK, uh, or all the SDKs, but in particular, I was interested in the Go SDK because that's what I build. Uh, so um, I started looking at this, and I'm like, this is amazing. We get to use Go to build our pipelines, uh, get rid of a bunch of our glue stuff, uh, get rid of all these crazy templating and things that we're doing in uh, HCL and YAML, and we could add unit tests and share Go packages just like anything else. Um, we also started looking at wanting to automate our releases going from the, our old style, which is kind of cool in that like if when I when I build a new version of Docker, I commit 
some parameters to a repo and go and kick that off. So I can always uh, go and say, oh, what was Docker? What, were, what, what did, how do we build Docker 20.10.20 or whatever uh, the version is? I can go check out that, that tag and it'll have everything that we need uh, in there. But that also means we have to commit stuff to a repo um, just to build everything. And um, that definitely hurt automation. So uh, as part of moving over to the Dagger Go SDK, we kind of looked at how to fix a lot of these other issues we were having um, and how the, our pipelines are initiated and all that kind of stuff. And one of the biggest things is that we can run our pipelines locally now, which is phenomenal. Um, not have to fire up uh, Azure DevOps because that's we're at Microsoft and that's what we have to use uh, just to build our stuff and or to test our stuff. Uh, and with that, I'll kick it off to Peter. Thanks, Brian. Um, and what I've been working on with Brian um, is uh, further automating this um, uh, build process, build and packaging process. Here we go. So we have an external tool that um, really what it does is uh, determines what needs to be built. So this isn't something that uses Dagger, um, but it uh, queues up the builds for, um, for which we are using Dagger. And the input file is um, a just a YAML definitions file, just to give an indication of what that looks like. Um, for Moby Container D, we um, want to build uh, any new patch releases that are built for minor version 1.6 or 1.7. Um, for all of these distributions, including Windows, all these platforms, except these ones. So the build logic is a little complicated. So we have a tool um, that has static configurations of each of these packages and um, which specifies what needs to be built. Um, so when tags are um, pushed to GitHub, we, uh, we check them periodically for new releases. Um, we build the matrix from that. And if we've already built them, we filter them out. Otherwise we put together a, a small build definition um, JSON file and we send that off to Azure DevOps, which is our, our build pipeline. Um, and in this other pane here, um, I'll just show you a little bit um, about how we're using Dagger in particular. Um, and it, not if it's disruptive, Peter, but if it's possible to bump up the oh, the, size, oh, the other one. The yeah, there we go. Oh, I'll bump it down so you can fit everything. All right, so oh. this would be what what would be coming through um, this trigger mechanism. We want to build Moby Container D tag 1.7.0 for Linux AMD 64 and specifically this commit hash. And one thing that uh, Dagger is has provided that we find really amazing is the ability to just fetch git from source at a specific commit. Um, and so that we have this uh, get source. Um, the way that we do all our builds, we have just a um, opinionated file system layout that works for all of our different builds. So um, here you see all these different directories, one for each package. So whatever is in Moby container D, you see we have a few make files, um, we have a go file, and then the rest of these are just static files that are gonna end up in the package. Um, and over here is the make file. And so anything in this directory is gonna be mounted in forward slash build in our build container. Um, the, at, at this point, just assume that the um, build dependencies have all been installed. The source that we just fetched is going to be in um, build source. So, and then at the end here, after setting some environment variables and applying whatever patches, if there's a patches directory, um, then we run make and this package kind in this case is going to be deb for Debian uh, because it went to jammy. And so, it calls the deb target, we change into source. So again, that's gonna be in build source where our source is, build the binaries, um, generate the man pages. And at this point, our build is complete. And, oh man, window manager stuck. Uh, okay. Um, and so at this point, all of our binaries and man pages, whatever static, <laughs> static files have been built um, are in the container. 
And so we have this um, static Go struct, which um, encapsulates the, the mappings between what's in the build container and where it should end up on the, on the final target system. So in uh, build source bin, which is where the binaries will end up, we want that when you run apt get install mobi container D, it's going to end up at user bin. Um, man pages in their right location. Um, you can optionally compress things as they're installed. Um, we keep systemd units separate so that uh, we can auto enable them and, and whatnot as part of the install scripts, um, which we can embed using Go. Um, and then other metadata like um, runtime dependencies um, and uh, description of the package. And so I'm going to um, run display. Oh, oh, not cat. I demo dot cat. There we go. So just to review the package that we're going to build, um, again, this is um, Mobi Container D 1.7.0 uh, for Linux AMD 64, specifically Ubuntu Jammy. Um, just to review the make files and um, our output directory is, is empty. And now we're going to go ahead and, and run our packaging tool that we built. And the amazing thing that Dagger does is allows us to, um, for example, in the static packaging configuration, it allows us to um, build an abstraction around it. So we have an interface that, that packages things for Deb, interface that packages things for RPM versus Windows. Um, and we can do that all in Go code with which um, Brian and I are very familiar um, and it's a very powerful language. So here's the, the metadata from the package that we just built. Um, and here's the file system layout um, that you'll get when you run apt get install. Uh, and just to show a little bit of the flexibility, well, this is, this is we're gonna do a, a Red Hat build as well, um, but it's, it's mainly a repeat. Um, and so I'll just show a little bit about how we're setting up the containers. Um, so we're building on the target distribution. So if we're building for Red Hat 9, we have a Red Hat 9 um, container and we're going to install um, these packages. Um, these are all the build dependencies for all of the packages. Um, and again, it's just static Ghostruct, which makes it super easy to maintain and, and know what's going on. Um, and so our Red Hat build has completed down here. You can see that it's built this RPM for us. Um, this is uh, the file system layout, and um, it's also going to show the um, install scripts as, uh, as they are um, in the package. And um, like Brian said, being able to run this locally uh, has enabled us to have a very, very basic um, pipeline. We have all our parameters set up, but then really it's just this, um, this isn't in production yet, but it's just this very simple, you know, um, command. We, this has been triggered externally. So we have our, all the information we need to make a build and we just plug that in. I, and it runs the same in the pipeline as it does on, on my system. Um, and that has made it super easy to get this up and running. Um, before, like Brian said, we had turn complete YAML. So we had like nested for loops um, and uh, it, which is essentially just like text substitution in YAML and um, knowing how it was gonna behave um, required e either like a lot of careful planning and attention or just what most people do and what I do is just push it and see what happens when the pipeline runs. Um, this enables us to really tighten the feedback loop and develop the pipeline a lot quicker. Um, we did come across a couple of pain points. Maybe we can, if, if there's time uh, at the end of the call, maybe we can get into those. But um, for now, I'll just like to thank you for your time and um, move on unless there's any questions. Well, we had, we had, we did have a couple, um, 
uh, we've got one that was answered about the um, about the the repo being open source. Thanks, Brian, for dropping a link in there. Everybody, check it out. Um, and you know, it sounds like yeah, it's under development. There's some features that'll be sliding in, some more dagger features. Um, and and also, there was a super important question about um, your window manager, Peter. Is that vanilla i3 or People, it is. People, it is yeah. vanilla i3. Um, I can't get uh, screen sharing to work with Wayland. Uh, normally, I run Sway on my own machine, but you can thank Microsoft for that and Teams. Yeah. No. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, and I think we could. Um, we we definitely. If if you want to address the pain points, since we're right, like in context now, that would be totally fine. We'd love to get those recorded. Sure. Um, one one thing that we run. Uh, Two, two main things, um, one I'll let Brian talk about, but the one that I ran into as I'm working on these pipelines is it's either impossible or difficult to figure out how to like get into the build container that we're spinning up. Like sometimes it's really easy to just uh, get into a shell and look around. Um, and part of it is kind of just the way that Dagger's um, set up. Part of it is, so it, my workaround was um, to just export the root FS um, as a file system and, and take a look around in there. Um, but there is an issue with BuildKit where um, exports with large numbers of files will sometimes hang and never complete. Um, so I had to have the additional step of tarring that up in a tarball and then exporting that. Um, and that, you know, that loosens up the, the feedback loop, which is obviously not ideal. So um, if it were possible to um, get into the container and poke around. That would that would save us a lot of time. Um, and then, um, pretty neat use case. But we do, uh, for testing purposes, need to run System D in a container. And as far as we know, we can't take control of PID one with a Dagger container. But I'll let Brian talk about that. Yeah, that, that, that that's pretty much it. Uh, uh, found it. so our tests currently they. Essentially, this is a Docker file that installs systemd and gets everything set up to run systemd, spin up a container, uh, exec in, and install our packages um, like you like one normally would, and expect you know, and then run our test cases, make sure you know Docker is running and make it that uh, a regular Docker run works, Docker build, and all the different plugins and all that stuff uh, just works. Uh, and pretty much found uh, really quickly that. Dagger is running a shim process inside the container, uh, which is PID one, which uh, system B does not like in the in the least. Um, so kind of looking, I was already working on a separate project that uh, revolves around spinning up uh, VMs with QMU very quickly inside of a container. So been in the middle of kind of pulling that into our project. Uh, that so that we actually use Dagger to spin up a container that will spin up QMU uh, with SSH. We use services to connect to the H SSH daemon uh, inside the the VM and execute our tests that way. Uh, still work in progress there, but uh, yeah. Nice, nice. Oh, that's yeah, super helpful feedback. I know uh, we had a little bit in the. Uh, there's some stuff going on in the chat right now talking about um, these issues. So super appreciate you raising them. And yeah, there was a, Andrea did do a demo a while back about interactive kind of breakpoints um, that you could set and then drop into the containers to see what was going on. So I think we need to, I think that's definitely something that's on the roadmap and um, awesome to get yeah more feedback about your use cases though. And then it uh, looks like Eric is talking a little bit about um, PID1 stuff, but um, yeah, super appreciate the demo and looking forward to following your project and uh, seeing all the things you accomplish and 